that I mean, that's all I ever get told. Who are, who is this guy? My wife in the back there loves that line. Rob Cruz, who is this guy? She thinks it should be on a sign. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself so you can know. So I grew up on the east side of Joliet. My dad's a Marine Corps veteran. Woo! And he worked up in the 70s at, at the end of the Seven Vietnam. Five. But my mom has the most interesting story. My mom came from a family where every sibling is adopted. It's the most interesting thing I've ever heard. My grandma went around all the girls in Pilsen and told them, if you found yourself in a situation, don't do it. Give me the baby and I'll raise it as my own. And she took in seven kids. Woo! So without that happening, I wouldn't even be here. So when people ask me, hey Robert, you know, what's your position on abortion? I'm not, I don't have much to say about it because I'm living my position on abortion because I'm here. And so. Amen. And, and I, I, I want to add to that, you know, my grandma really did something not a lot of people are doing. You know, there, there's an adoption awareness that needs to raise up in this country. Because if, if we're being honest and we're going to be a pro-life party, we need to be an adoption awareness party. That needs to be a big thing moving forward for us because there's a lot of people out there that may not do it if they knew they had somewhere else to go with this situation. So that'll be something I'll be talking about a lot as time goes on. Um, growing up on the east side of Joliet, you either were sports or you were in gangs. And I chose sports. And the beauty of that was is all the officers, even some of the guys that you've met out here today, they would watch a play. And the, and the coolest part was I knew the officer's name. His name was Officer Hernandez. He knew where I lived. He knew where my parents were. And I think we've lost that contact with our law enforcement as a citizen. They, we don't know their names and they don't know our names. And I think we need to renew that. Here, here. Uh, growing up, I grew up in the Catholic school system. I, I, know, I know there's some people here from Kankakee. I don't know if anyone went to Bishop Mack, but I went to Providence in New Orleans. Um, but I was lucky enough and worked hard enough that I was, I know I don't look like Brett Favre, but I was a starting quarterback on two, um, two consecutive state championship teams. We won 50 games in a row and we finished ninth in the country twice. And the reason why I bring that up is because I don't, I like to win, but, but it also takes a lot of work to win. No one ever knew that I was getting up at 14 years old at six o'clock in the morning to go work out with 50 other kids. No one knew that we were then coming back to practice at four o'clock to do other stuff. We didn't, we didn't blast that out. And part of the reason why I bring that up is because work ethic is important when you're gonna do this job. We're, we're kind of tired of these guys who just don't wanna go to work, you know? And that's why I love being associated with guys like Gary, people like Catalina, people like Scott. They wanna go to work, and so do I. Um, you know, uh, not, not to, or to go back a little bit, you know, on my Catholic faith, it's where I was introduced to Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, Amen. And, uh, Jesus Amen. Christ has a big impact on my life, so um, I, I owe everything to him. But lastly, the biggest lesson I learned in high school was how does one deal with adversity? when an adverse situation arises because there's not a human in this room that's never felt adversity's clutch. It's gonna reveal your character. It's gonna tell us who you really are. And right now, I don't think Illinois or the country is dealing with adversity very well. We are struggling with adversity because we lack character in our elected leaders. Um, after that, I went to college. Went to University of uh, Millican University down in Decatur, but it, it smelled like beans down there. It was awful. I went to the University of Dubuque after that, but I had to come home because, as I mentioned before, my dad was a military veteran, but he also struggled from something that everyone here knows someone who struggled with, and that's mental health issues and undiagnosed PTSD. As, as a party, I hear us talking about a lot of different things, but I don't hear us talking about mental health issues. I mean, for Christ's sake, some of these liberals have mental health issues, do they not? Amen. <laughs> but we need to talk about that because it is the root variable in the math equation that causes disruption and destruction and everything that it touches because it's linked to every human. There's not a person 
in this room, there's not a person in this state, country or world that doesn't know someone who has a mental health issue and it disrupts your family. So let's be the party that changes it. Let's be the party that attacks it and makes it aware so that we can destroy it or at least manage it. So we're not having to deal with it in the long term. Um, so then, you know, after that, I got my first job at Cintas, worked in corporate life for a while. Wasn't for me either. I'm like Gary. I wanted to, I wanted to own the world too, right? Just didn't get as big as Gary did. But I, I started a little company in real estate. I do consulting, general contracting, and a, a lot of different aspects of real estate. And being a small business owner, I've been feeling the pain every year since I started doing this, which was in 2005. Taxes go up, credits go down, you, you, workers' comp insurance is through the roof. How could it be where in Illinois, workers' comp insurance is through the roof, but in Florida, it's fine? How could that be? And I figured it out. It's the size of the government. The units of government need to be paid for, and they get paid for by me, and you, and everyone here. So it's time to shrink government because that's the socialistic approach that has ravaged all the countries of my ancestors. I'm Hispanic, South America, Puerto Rico, you name it, it's been destroyed by socialism. So at the top of my agenda is going to be an anti-socialistic agenda, shrink the government, make local government work for you. One of my, my opponent, Tammy Duckworth, she thinks government should be her life because she's never had a public sector job. She's never had to make payroll, Gary, when you didn't get paid and you're chasing someone down on a 90 day. She's never had to pay her electric bill with her credit card because her check didn't clear. But I have. Um, so then I, the one thing that, the reason why I, I even got into this is because during that process, I did hear something that nobody wants to hear. I heard the three words that every person in this room will fear and it's, you have cancer. And it almost broke my heart. I didn't know what to do. I had just gotten married. We had, my daughter had just turned one and took her first steps in the hospital. I was determined to figure out that this was not going to be the end for me. So I did what, I know, what any other person would do growing up in the Catholic faith. I got on my knees and I begged Jesus Christ for my life. Amen. Amen. And I told him this, and I'm gonna tell you guys the same thing. I made a deal with him. I said, if you save me from this fate, I will not make my, my, my life meaningless. Amen. It will be worth something, I promise. That's right. So that experience came, and obviously I'm here, so thank you, Jesus. <laughs> he took care of me, so now it's my turn to take care of him. Um, I got involved. I was like, what can I do to help? I went into these hospitals and I started volunteering to see other people who were sick, who were looking for something to hold on to, some hope, some faith, anything. I'd go in there and tell them, if you don't try, they're gonna, you know, you're not gonna get out of here. There's only one way you're getting out of here and that's by giving a maximum effort. But then I met a lady who changed my entire life forever. She was uh, in her 60s. She was on her third cancer. Blue Cross Blue Shield PPO, best plan you could have, and she and her copay was 70%. And I thought, how could you work your whole life at ComEd for 40 years? Sell your house for 400 grand, cash out your 401k for $1.2 million, and pay 70% of a $200,000 bill every month. You know what she told me? Robert, it's just easier if I died. And I said, you're wrong. And this is why you're wrong. Because if you quit and you give in, then your daughter who's in this room and your granddaughter who's in this room, they're gonna think it's okay that they can quit too. That's right, that's right. It's not. So we go down fighting, we no matter fight. what. Anyone around me knows that I have this saying, it's a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. And I'm a winner. So that's I'm not right. gonna quit. That's right. So I talked to my mom. I said, Mom, something, somebody should do something about this. And she's like, well, the only person who could do something about that is if somebody changed the law. And I just went, oh, it looks like that's going to be me. 
That's right. That's right. So the call to action was, what can I do to get involved, right? I started going to these Republican events and, and, and seeing who's who and what's what, and how it all works. And I saw a void. And the first void was, I believe that we needed, you know, the, the Republican Party in Illinois needs a facelift. It needs a culture change. Right? That's why I wanted to be a part of the GOP Jamboree. Because our mission was to modernize our party into the 21st century. The way it looks, the way it smells, the way it touches, the way it tastes, the way it feels. I want it to look modern. Right? I wanted it to be, I wanted young people to be proud to tell their friends, yeah, I'm a Republican, so what? That's what I wanted to do. That's right. So we started the GOP Jamboree. Our first event, we, had, we registered 400 people. We, we, we had better weather, so that probably helped. Right, Akib? Um, but anyways, we, and we're not gonna stop doing this. This is, you know, adverse, I've been through much adverse situations in this. We're gonna continue to do this, and we're gonna grow this thing until it becomes a monster, okay? Secondly, being a small business owner, COVID hits, and then I'm getting calls from people saying, did you hear they wanna raise taxes on businesses in Illinois during a pandemic? And I said, are you serious? And the guy's like, yeah. So I made a few phone calls from a friend from high school and I got on the, I think it was the Ken Griffith side of the vote no against the fair tax amendment. I did three commercials. I went out on the mailer that went out to 4 million people. And I told my wife this, because they put our, they put, they didn't put where we live, but they put what county we were in. And I said, if we don't stand up now, they're gonna take everything they want. And I've already lost it all once. I ain't losing it all again. So I joined that fight and we won 57 to 43 until he doctored the numbers with his mail-in ballot. Bullshit. <laughs> and, and we won because I got the numbers afterwards. It's 44.9%. Our business owners that are small business or work for a small business, and every single one of them voted he, uh, sorry voted no against the amendment, Democrat, Republican, and Independent alike. And then we got 13 percent on top of that. So that gave me hope that if we focus on our business aspects of Republicans, we can sway the minds of those who are on the fence. And after that, I helped out on some, some campaigns. Um, at the time, unfortunately, I was campaigning against Catalina until I met her, and I realized I was on the wrong side. I was on the wrong side after that. Um, but I, I learned a few things from that. But then I thought, you know what? I need to put my money where my mouth is because nobody likes a talker. Everyone likes a doer. So I got involved in a school board race. And in my area, I live in Cook County. I know, I know the reputation. I know what they say. Cook exactly. County. So. But what if I told you that I won a school board race in a liberal district as a conservative? And it wasn't, and it wasn't, and it wasn't because they liked me. It's because I challenged the property taxes that Gary talked about. How can we live in a state where we're the second highest uh, tax property tax place in the country, and we get the worst value for our dollar? It doesn't make any sense to me. So. Um, and then after that, I wanted to you know, take a step more. So I decided to run for the United States Senate because I didn't like what Tammy Duckworth was saying and I don't like what she's doing. And so I'll leave you guys with this. And in, that, in, the, in the previous statement I made about the culture change, and this is Illinois specific, we gotta start working together. Good teams pick up their teammates. They work with their teammates. They don't destroy them for their own benefit. That's right. Right? And I wanna, I wanna give a special, I was, at a, I was at an event on Monday, and Gary was there, and Darren was there, and I was watching them. They didn't even know I was watching them. And they're the real leaders of our party, I think, because they're in the, one of the most high profile competitions that we've had in a long time on the Republican side and they're asking each other how their families are doing as we're going through this and I just thought this is what real men look like right here and as long as, long as, as long as these guys continue to do it and I know they will I'm going to continue to do it we need to work as a group 
we will never beat these guys individually. Amen. So, um, so I'll, I'll leave you with this. My, my saying, my thing is, I, I like to say this when I'm talking to people. I'm going to be the candidate that's all for one and one for all. That's right. That's right. So let's try it one time. We'll do all for one and then we'll do one for all. Ready? All for one, one for all. Thank you. speaker tonight. He's a guy that I met um, in January and then uh, had the pleasure of meeting him shortly after that. I love his style. I love his message of the big tent party. I love that he's a doer and I love that he that he wants to get in there and he gets after it. So uh, keynote speaker of tonight, Scott Presley. Woo!